Now by this point, I've been pretty vocal about my thoughts when it comes to these ultra high yielding ETFs like the yield mass ETFs, for example, things like Tesla, Apple, Kony, and others. My thoughts are basically that I utilize these ETFs in a small portion for my portfolio as sort of more of a fun slash lottery ticket for my portfolio. But I personally, as a 31 year old investor with plenty of time ahead of me, would never only buy things like this for my portfolio. But that doesn't change the fact that buying into some of these higher yielding instruments couldn't help you really, really raise your dividend income on a monthly basis, which is partially, once again, why I have some of it in my portfolio. Now, in this video, we're going to specifically go through the Yieldmax Coin Option Income Strategy ETF. I want to dig a little bit deeper into this ETF, explain how it works, and then later I'm going to share with you how just a $20,000 investment, yes, $20,000, could generate a life-changing amount of dividend income for an investor, if and only if they're willing to take the risk. I have some huge news to share with you guys, my brand new dividend investing ebook and custom dividend tracker that I've been working on for weeks now is finally done. So go ahead and grab a copy down below, it's the first link in my description. Thank you in advance, and let's get right into the video. Now, right here on the Yieldmax ETF website, it says Yieldmax Coin Option Income Strategy ETF or CONI. Yieldmax then explains that this fund does not invest directly into coins. They explain that even though they reference to the coin stock or coin base, for those of you that aren't familiar. By referencing coin and utilizing a synthetic cover call strategy, CONI has been able to generate massive premiums and massive profits for investors at least so far year to date. Now, looking a little bit deeper into CONI, the distributions year to date have been insane. October's distribution was $1.20, then we have November's distribution $1.07, and then the most recent December distribution that basically broke the internet and broke the brains of many of us dividend income focused investors, $2.46 dividend paid. And this is for an ETF that only costs $25 per share. Now some more interesting aspects about Kony. The gross expense ratio is massive at almost a percent, which is sort of industry standard when it comes to an ETF that's this actively managed because the fund managers are very actively managing this ETF, it's ordered to be expected. Also important, the net assets are around 170 million. And lastly, also important, this fund's inception is 81423. So this ETF is relatively brand new. Next, to get a little bit more information on Kony, the actual prospectus, to see how this investment actually works. And I think this is important and fair for everyone to know if you are going to invest into something like this. So some important takeaways that I found is that an investment in the fund is not an investment in coin. So remember, when you invest in CONY, you are not directly investing into Coinbase. The fund strategy will cap the potential gains if coin shares increase in value, and that's because this fund uses a cover call strategy, which means the upside potential is going to be limited and capped. The fund strategy is subject to all potential losses if shares of coin decrease in value, which may not be offset by the income received by the fund. So this fund is going to be receiving a lot of income in the form of premiums from options as well as interest from U.S. Treasuries, etc., but the potential losses could still outweigh the gains. Now, also very important when it comes to the yield max ETFs, especially this one right here, it's a synthetic cover call strategy. So you or I most likely have either came across a cover call strategy or even implemented one ourselves. I definitely sell cover calls across my portfolio as of right now, and I use cover calls to generate more income and help with some downside protection. But in the case of yield max, they are utilizing a synthetic cover call strategy. It says in seeking to achieve its investment objective, the fund will implement a synthetic cover call strategy using the standardized exchange traded and flex options described above. A traditional cover call strategy is an investment strategy where the investor of the fund sells a call option on the underlying security that it owns. A synthetic cover call strategy is similar to traditional cover call strategies in that the investor sells a call option that is based on the value of the underlying security. However, in the synthetic cover call strategy, the investor of the fund does not own the underlying security. So that's where things definitely differ. Right now in my portfolios, I have cover call set up, but I own the underlying security. If I want to sell a cover call on Apple stock, I own shares of Apple, where this is not the case when it comes to Kony or a lot of the yield max ETFs. But rather to seek to synthetically replicate 100% of the price movements of the underlying security through the use of various investment instruments. But looking a little bit deeper into Kony, this ETF has performed pretty good in the max time frame up 34%, and that's not even including the massive dividends. Now, of course, it's too early to tell on if or if not, Kony is also going to slowly decay like many of the other yield max ETFs or like many of the other ultra high yield ETFs in general. But as of so far in the max time frame, I honestly can say it's doing pretty well. Now, it's no secret that lots of more dividend income focused investors are looking to find different instruments, different investment vehicles that are offering massive dividend yields 
because of course with a lot less money you can in theory generate a lot more dividends on a monthly basis if you're buying into a stock or etf that's yielding say 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent or even something as crazy as coney over 100 percent now i think it's also important to mention that when you are investing into some of these ultra high yielding etfs there's of course going to be some risks associated with it and like i said earlier maybe one of the most basic and common risks when it comes to some of these ultra high yielding ETFs are things like ETF price decay. Take the TSLY yield max Tesla option income strategy ETF that's been trading since around November of 2022. This ETF was trading at around $22 per share back in November last year, and now it's trading at around $11 per share. So even though this ETF has paid out massive dividends every single month, relatively speaking at least, a 60 cent dividend this last month, even a $1.07 dividend back in July, and so on and so forth. Even though this ETF has paid out massive amounts in dividends, we're talking $9.12 in dividends over the last 12 months. But even with that, an investor that bought into this ETF at around $22 per share, if that same investor is holding, even with all those dividends, they've basically broken even. So imagine you bought into TSLY at around $21, $22 per share. You got paid these massive dividends along the way, but what are you left with? you're left with an ETF that's been basically cut in half. Now, another risk, of course, is that these ultra high yielding ETFs like TSLY or like Kony for this video's example, do not pay the same amount of dividends every single month. Of course, as of recently, there was a massive dividend that was just paid at $2.46 back in December. So a lot of investors are obviously very interested in this ETF because let's be real here, that's just insane. But as you can see last month, the dividend that was paid was less than half. And once again, I'm not saying that a $1.08 dividend is bad for an ETF that costs $25 per share. I'm not saying it's bad whatsoever, but I am saying that there is risk moving forward, of course, knowing that the dividends are going to be different. And depending on how these ETFs trade month by month by month, the dividends are going to be reflecting that. But I promised you earlier that just a $20,000 investment into Kony, in theory, going off of the numbers that we have so far could be life-changing and could offer a massive amount of income for an investor, of course, that's willing to take on the potential risks. So if we were to take $20,000 and divide it by $25.19 or a price of one share of Kony as of right now, an investor with just $20,000 invested could purchase 793 shares of Kony, which as we saw as of last month at least, just going off of last month, paid out $2.46 per share. So now, if this investor had 793 shares, and in theory got paid $2.46 per share in dividends, this investor would receive $1,953 in dividends on a monthly basis from the Kony ETF, which is the $20,000 invested. Now, once again, I repeat, beware that these higher yield ETFs most of the time pay different amounts on a monthly basis. So if an investor was to receive, let's say $1,900 with around 800 shares in their portfolio, that doesn't mean that the next month they could receive around $1,000 in dividends, which again, in some people's eyes is not bad at all. And for me personally, this is exactly why for my portfolio, I tend to just buy a few shares of things like this because I don't want my entire dividend amount on a monthly basis being shifted around that much. One month being super high, one month being super low. I like to be more hands-on in my portfolio and be able to sort of predict where I'm at on a monthly basis a little bit closer. But for those investors out there that are just dying to get their dividend income up on a monthly basis, and for those investors out there that are willing to take on some potential risks, some of these ultra high yielding ETFs, like the Yieldmax ETFs, for example, there's plenty of others also. I'm just using Yieldmax because they're common and a lot of us know about them. Some of these might be worth looking into because a lot of these are offering distribution rates upwards of 20, 30, 40, or even 100% per year. But when it comes to building out a dividend income focused portfolio, I want to hear from you guys down below. Do you or do you not have any ETFs or stocks in your portfolio? that we would consider ultra high yield, something north of say 10, 15, 20%. And if you do, drop the ticker symbols in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like in it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.